And let us pray. The Lord, sometimes it's hard to keep that little muscle in our mouth under control. It seems to guide us oftentimes more than we guide it. We pray, Lord, that you would teach us the importance of how to use that tongue. <coughs> For that tongue should glorify you. And our tongue should make the world know that you are our Lord, not only by the words we use, but in accordance with our actions. Send your spirit to us today and mark us anew. And may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you and to you alone, for you are our Redeemer, Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. Well, grace to you and peace from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who was, who is, and who will always be. I'm going to reread the second lesson, this time with the message. Not that you didn't do a good job, John. <laughs> but sometimes the message puts in easier words. Don't be in any rush to become a teacher. My friend's teaching is highly responsible work. Teachers are held to the strictest standards, and none of us is perfectly qualified. We get it wrong nearly every time we open our mouths. If you could find someone whose speech was perfectly true, you'd have a perfect person in perfect control of life. A bit in the mouth of a horse controls the whole horse. A small rudder on a huge ship in the hands of a skilled captain sets a course in the face of the strongest winds. A word out of your mouth may seem of no account, but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it. Did you hear that? A word out of your mouth may seem of no account, but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it. It only takes a spark, remember, to set off a forest fire. A careless or wrongly placed word out of your mouth can do that. By our speech, we can ruin the world, turn harmony to chaos, throw mud on reputation, send the whole world up in smoke, and go up in smoke with it, smoke right from the pit of hell. This is scary. You can tame a tiger, but you can't tame a tongue. It's never been done. The tongue runs wild, the wanton killer. With our tongues, we bless God our Father, and at the, with the same tongue, we curse the very men and women he made in his image. Curses and blessings out of the same mouth. My friends, this can't go on. A spring doesn't gush fresh water one day and brackish the next, does it? Apple trees don't bear strawberries, do they? Raspberry bushes don't bear apples, do they? You're not going to dip into a polluted mud hole and get a cup of clear, cool water, are you? Here ends the lesson. A little easier to understand, isn't it? A little more plain in the speech from the message. And the reality is what James is talking about is the power of our mouth. One of the things that has happened in our society is that our mouth has controlled everything. I was watching a video, um, and it's a commercial for VidAngel.com, where they put on good, good uh, movies without bad words. Remember one of the first times a terrible word was used in a movie? 1939. Frankly, my dear, I don't give up. You don't need to put it in. 
You already thought it, right? The worst movie of all time for the number of swear words was Wolf of Wall Street. 587 horrible words. And not only that, that was just in English. There were other innuendos and things that took place in the movie. And in this commercial, I, go Google it on YouTube, it's quite interesting. You have a family of four sitting in front of the television. They're dressed in white. And all of a sudden, they turn on the television. They have their popcorn there. And behind them, or in front of them, are people dressed in black, and on the backs of their shirts are parts of words. Not the whole word, but you know what the word is. And they have paint guns. And they begin to shoot. And this family is absolutely plastered with different colors of paint coming out of the guns, but really representing the words they're being hit with. And it ends by saying, words make an impact. Words make an impact. And you can say, well, that word is a bad word. And this is what I've heard from people. Oh, it's just a word. It's just a word. There's nothing wrong with that word. All people talk like that. And I think, well, my husband and I don't talk that way. Not everyone talks that way. But our society has taken up all kinds of words to use that batter your soul. You may say, really? Ah, oh, I heard the word. Believe me, the word goes in and the word stays there. You parents, you know this. You say something at home. I can tell you back there. I can see you, Alex. You know everything that happens and everything. Oh, okay, Mom. <laughs> yeah, she's pointing. Anyway, we all know that, right? What comes out of our mouth goes right into the person next to us. And children suck it all in and it eventually comes right out. But you do the same as an adult. James is very clear, the power of the tongue to break into people's hearts is extremely powerful. And it's not just that. It's what we say and do about others. What we say affects the world around us. What we say changes someone's heart and soul. We're in a world where people say whatever they want, whether it's true or not true, whether it's on the news or not on the news. We are battered day in and day out about the horrors of everybody else. Have you heard those horrors? Turn on Facebook. Check Twitter. Look at what's on television. News isn't really news anymore. News is commentary about what people want you to think about somebody else. Have you ever noticed that? Away goes the news and in comes the commentary. I don't really care about the commentary. Give me the news. I remember those days. For you who are here, who was probably the most Respected of all of our newsmen, Walter Cronkite. I met him. He was a nice man. I met him in Germany. Well, actually, I met him in Vienna, in Austria. When he told you the news, the commentaries are what kill people. Give me the facts. James is really talking about that. The impact that we have with our words to build or destroy, to nail or to lift up, is extremely important for us to remember. Think about those images he used. 
the tongue, we need to bridle it because this small thing can actually move somebody else around. How many times have you been killed in your heart because of what somebody else has said? Sometimes in the family. Do you remember this little statement? Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Anybody ever say that growing up? I remember it well. But a music group called Second Chapter of Acts rewrote those words. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will break my heart. How true that is. How we're either lifted up in the family or we're destroyed in the family by this little thing we call a tongue. And in the church, it's no different. In fact, no matter where we go, we're on the onslaught. And James is telling us, this is bad. We curse and we bless out of this same little thing. And, and he's saying, please don't do that. Let your blessing be a blessing. There's a story of a young man who went to a barber shop regularly with his dad. And when he was in the barber shop, everybody was good and he got his hair cut. Well, one day his dad couldn't go with him. He was 10 years old. And he went to the barber shop on his own. And as he sat in the barber shop, nobody paid any attention to him. And a guy came in and his language was absolutely raunchy. And here is this 10-year-old boy who knows that that man sings in the choir at church. And it marked him. He never looked at that man the same way. How we talk affects those around us. What we say either breaks or lifts up. How we approach people tells them who we are. And how is it that Jesus either lives in our lives or doesn't live in our lives? And it's not just whether we use curse words or not. It's how we talk to and for other people. How we lift up those who are broken down. We are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. What does Christ say? How does Christ act? What does Christ do? What do you say? How do you act? What do you do? James wants us to think, each one of us, about who we are on the inside and how that is expressed through the mouth and then brought in by those around us. This is a big deal. One pastor wrote, I'd like to tell my church, I can stand at a door and I'll step into the church and I'll speak one way, and then I can step out of the church and I can use different language. I'll step into the church and say this, but then I can step out of the church and say that. Because this is acceptable in the church and that is not acceptable in the church. And I'm not just talking about words, words, words. I'm talking about everything about our words. Whether it's true or whether it's a lie, whether it's a curse word, whether it's a blessing, does it really matter? When I went to my 10-year class reunion, someone came up, slapped me on the back, and said, Frenstein, how the blank are you? What are you doing these days? And I said, I don't think you want to know, as she had used multiple expletives. And she said, no, no, I want to know what you're doing. I said, oh, I don't think so. And my friend said, you don't, know what I, you don't want to know what she does. And she said, yes, I do. And I said, well, I'm a pastor. And she goes, oh, I'm so sorry for what I said. And I said, it's not me you got to worry about. 
I'm the least of anybody's worry, right? But everything you say, everything you do, affects somebody else. Your words of kindness can build up someone who is totally broken. And everything you say and do can either lift a heart or break a heart. Which would you prefer to do? I know what James says, and I know what Jesus would want. My friends, this can't go on. A spring doesn't gush fresh water one day and brackish the next, does it? Apple trees don't bear strawberries, do they? Raspberry bushes don't bear apples, do they? You're not going to dip into a polluted mud hole and get a cup of clear, cool water, are you? Same with your mouth. You need to lift up your kids and your grandkids, your spouse, or do you rip them to shreds? I was blessed because my parents didn't rip us to shreds, but my dad had been ripped. Part of the reason he didn't. What is it again? It says here, a word out of your mouth may seem of no account, but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it. You know, James is pretty tough on us, isn't he? Last week it was works and faith go together, hand in hand. Next week it's going to be about wisdom. 